Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again. As today I thought I'd just let you in on how I work when I'm making myself a tag or something. And I have started by colouring this white piece of paper with some frayed burlap. And I'm using that Distress Ink tool. And these are refillable, so you can actually peel them off and just put another one when they are starting to break. And then I have started using the gathered twigs to go around the edges just to give it some more definition. And to enhance the edges even more, I'm just going to drag the ink pad around like so. And I did have an idea of making a splatter of sorts. And I do have, yes, I need to think now. These are pretty handy, I must say. This is a some kind of a, I'm not sure if you call it pipette. It's in Swedish anyway, it's a pipette. And that is something you can actually pick up some color with. And here I have pulled out my dilutions journal book. And you can see that I'm working on this uh, in different stages, really. Here I have done some spraying and such, and I'm just keen keeping this, and I'm hoping it will be a funky page. So this is the way I work with my book. Instead of wasting the spray or the ink, I just put it here, and sometimes I even do a, a complete page from the start, and even still continue putting on different things afterwards. So my thought for this one is to actually pick up some ink and this is the weathered wood I'm sure this won't be whoops you see it actually sucks up the ink so let's say I'm going to do a splatter thing here whoops it doesn't work as well as I thought so that's the drawback once I dry, tried, it, tried this with a straw but I didn't really fancy it. So I'm just going to blotch it off and see what happens because these inks are water reactive so they're going to either get paler or just mix into a new new color perhaps. I'm just going to dry this. My thought is to make this into a bookmark using this owl stamp sitting, owl are sitting on a pile of books there. And I'm thinking of incorporating that with a book sentiment stamp thing. And I'm going to use something from Vilda Stamps. I do have one, perhaps two book related stamps. So it's going to be a Swedish one, I think, this one. But before I go there, I would like to try these. Um, I'm not in a dream shop. Dream weavers, I think they are called, these metal stencils. And this one has got cogwheels on it. So I'm hoping it's going to be nice. But in order to not spray on more that I want. I'm going to put that one there and then I'm going to go for pumice. Pumice stone is a mixture I've made with my with the distress refill bottle and if I lift it I'm hoping to be able to get some sort of a pattern there and since these colors are pretty close I'm not going to get that bit, bit, bit of a big of an effect I'm going to try work, turning this over. I could actually put the paper on top. In that way I could get more control of what I'm doing. I'm just going to get the negative of this spray and stencil. It didn't turn out as I wanted, so just dry this one off pretty quickly. So it, it wasn't the effect I was going for. Now that I look at it, and uh, when I look at it, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. 
It isn't half that bad, is it? But I'm thinking that I might use it once more. Just put it on top completely and spray spray it with some a bit darker ink, perhaps vintage photo. And just lift it. And let's see what happens. Well, it's quite all right, I think. I'm thinking that I might need something stronger around the edges, really. So the walnut stain is the darkest brown hue in the distressing series. I'm just going to drag it across or around the edges here. And I'm not bothered about it going inwards. I actually like it because then it gives it more definition. It doesn't look that perfect, because I'm not that perfect of a person when it comes to crafting. It can be, it can be what it is. So, this is a nice looking background, I think. I could go further with some stamps. I've got these stamps from Vilda Stamps. There's a whole lot of talk about Vilda right now. But I suppose I'm in a Vilda mood. And I thought I'd... put a little... Of Cobbling effects here and there. So that one is on that stamp, and I might as well just go for a smaller one here. And just to give it a bit of definition, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for the archival ink uh, ink pads, and this time I'm using the coffee coffee color, and I'm going to ink and stamp. And I usually like to do it twice. So let's go for another stamp from Builder. And this time I'm going to go for sepia. I still do want some difference in the colours. I don't want to stay in the same colour all the time. And as you see, I usually tend to just work on, on, on top of them. I like, I, like, I like to put them on top of each other to give them some depth. And if I'm going to go for the black now, this is going to be on top of both of them. Because it's the strongest colour, really. I sort of like that. And just to mess things up a bit, I might even do it once more on either side. There's a quite a lot of ink, you know, <clears throat> left over on those stamps. I also got... And a thing that I'm storing my stamps is in is called a stuff tainer and they come in three different depths. So this is the thin one because I've only cling mounted these, or should I say, easy mounted them, easy mount mounted them. Where could I put this one? Let's see. There, perhaps. That was a nice colour, wasn't it? I always like to put in something orange in my projects. Can't help myself. Do you see what I mean? It's a nice colour combo there. And perhaps that could be enough with those cogs. So you see, it isn't that thick in size, and since it goes inwards, it actually just keeps these stamps in place, even if they were to loosen by themselves. So let's see if I'm going to put that owl somewhere. I'm a bit afraid that this won't show as much as I want it to, but if I put it down there, I'm hoping I'll be able to do it. And for this stamp, I'm going to go for the Versafine ink pad, because that is a bit stronger, I think, than the archival. I still want to make that pop up even more. 
and let's see what would happen if I were to put it like so and I want to give it a good squeeze or press 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 so I won't miss anything and there you have it a lovely looking owl isn't he but I just remembered that uh, that the English book stamp is a bit tricky to use because I don't like to put that frame there hoping to be able to keep this in place let's see, I'm going to take an acrylic block and I'm just going to stamp it there and I'm just going to show you what it looks like although I do like having a frame there I'm thinking that it would be too distracting if I were to put it on there so what I could do of course is I could stamp it up and take away the ink from the edges so I might just do that see how it works and before I stamp it on the front in the front I'm actually going to try it out on the back side here the stamps are gliding so they're giving me a hard time now so I need to be careful not to take away the ink from the text and I know that this is a, a bit tricky but in this way I'm hoping I'll actually have two ways to use this stamp and since the ink is pretty wet I'm hoping it won't dry before I'm ready with this so I'm just going to drag it twice and I'm hoping that's, that'll be enough and then I'm going to do the stamping it actually works you say almost it works perhaps I have better use a tops or something just to make it even better reading is through the mind what exercise is to, is to the body sorry for being out of frame there so the question is should I cut away the frame I'm sure I could cut it away but still make it work if I were to want if I, if I, if I would like to put it there once more so I'm going to cut it diagonally like so I'm just going to cut it away like this trying to stay inside the frame without injuring the text bit actually and since I know that these parts will take the ink as well I'm going to trim them a little bit more so let's see how this would work because I don't want that frame right now let's go for the black once more stay I say And usually I just stamp pressing it from the upside. I'm not going to wiggle everything because then then it's but then the extra ink is going to spread out through the paper. So in this way I'm thinking I might be able to pull it off putting it on that tag. But then of course the question, yes. I was looking for this tag and I just realized it was on I was working on the back side of it. So let's see. You know, I just came to think about that. I, I did pull out some more stamps and I was thinking that I might actually put in something else. Well, I'm thinking that I might actually keep it there. I don't want to put that over the owl's ear. So I'm going to put it there. Hoping it won't look too stupid being there. And now I just need to keep these together so I know that they actually fit together. I can put them there for now. And what I wanted to continue with was these wonderful splotch stamps. 
because I'm all into mixed media and splotches and stuff right now. So this is the perfect stamp for that, I think. I like this a lot. And as you see, I haven't cleaned it that well. And in order to make this one nice, I'm going to continue perhaps with the sepia. I did like that effect there. And since I have stamped it with black, I'm sure that the black will take over, even though that one is in the background there. So it won't disrupt anything, so to speak. I might even put it there, because this is going to be a stained tag, you see. Just put that one there. Oh, I love that stamp, I can't help myself. I really can't. And I'm going to put it there. So this is the result so far. There's some splotches here and there. And let's see if I can get this one clean now. And a tag usually has its corners chopped like so. Perhaps I ought to be content with this. I could, of course, go on decorating it. Could even put a cogwheel here. You know, that's a nice idea, actually. That's a nice idea. So perhaps I could continue working on this. As it happens, I do have a punch that helps me make those corner punch-outs for tags. You see? Easy peasy. I do like punches. So easy to work with. And now I have to remember to actually ink up, ink up those cut corners. And I did have the frayed burlap and the gathered twigs. So here I go again. And for this one, I'll just do the dragging like so and finish it off with some walnut stain because that is the one that I had there. And I do like to keep them stacked like this so I know which one is which and I'll just put them in the bookshelf there. You know, I think I'll just pause here because I don't really know what to do with this. Perhaps I'll come back later to show you what I have made. I thank you for your patience. Bye-bye.